Hi everybody and welcome to the latest round of Iron Quest. Uh, this month we're looking at mobile first dashboards. Uh, so the task was to create a dashboard um, that was mobile friendly, so either mobile first or something that you could use on a mobile um, with any topic of your choice. Uh, so we've got a real variety of dashboards and visits to review today. I'm really excited to be joined by my co-host co Zach Bowders. Hey Zach, how are you? I'm great, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited for this. I've been wanting to have you as a co-host for a long time. It's finally happened. And I feel like the tables have turned because obviously you have your podcast, uh, Data Plus Love, um, and normally you're interviewing us. So I guess it feels a little bit like I'm interviewing you this time. I'm just glad to not have to lift the heavy burden. So enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all the work today. Um, so yes, great to have you here. Um, thank you for being part of this. Now, before we go into reviewing the visits, I want to just focus on some mobile design best practices. Um, so just so they can, I mean, before we see the feedback, we're going to refer to these back a, a lot. So I think it's good just to go through them. Um, hopefully before you designed your mobile viz, you might have referenced some best practices. Um, but yeah, let's just talk through these quickly. So the first thing to consider when designing for mobile is you need to design for thumbs. And what I mean by that is that most people use their mobile phone with their thumb. Unless you're my mum, because my mum uses her finger, um, which is really weird for me. Uh, but yeah, so when you think about how you use a phone, when you think of an app that you use regularly, let's say even like Twitter, for instance, you'll see that the buttons that you need to click uh, most frequently, so like your the home page, your profile, that kind of thing, they're all along the bottom. Um, and if you look at this picture here, this is designed for somebody who's right-handed. Um, so if you were left-handed, you'd literally flip it the other way. Um, but you can see that the most natural place for your thumb to sit is near the bottom or to the middle. If you're trying to stretch your thumb up to the top of your phone, particularly if you've got a big phone, you're going to struggle and it's, it's going to hurt. Um, so you don't want to put anything at the top there that you're going to have to reference back frequently and click. Um, so yeah, I don't, Zach, are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm right-handed and I can attest, you notice the apps that tend to put stuff in the far corners because it's just a constant aggravation when you're having to do yeah. that stretch. Particularly if you've opted for like an Excel version of a phone, which I've stayed away from despite having big hands. Because I want to be able to one hand my phone. Like yep. if I'm doing two hands on this thing, something's going wrong. I'm exactly the same. I type really fast and I type with my thumb. And um, I need, I, I've still got an iPhone 8. You'll see it in all its glory in a minute. <laughs> but, um, I'm about to, I'll get, I'll get one of the new ones soon. They just announced uh, yesterday, didn't they, that iPhone 12 is coming out. Um, so I'll be getting one of those as soon as I can. So I think I'm well overdue an upgrade. <laughs> it's time. It is time. Um, okay, so number two, um, adapt for a smaller space. So I think this is uh, quite obvious, but like when you have a mobile view, you're designing for a smaller screen. You're not designing for a big laptop screen or secondary monitor. Most of the time when you're using a phone and you think about apps that you use, you're scrolling up and down, not horizontally. To scroll horizontally on a phone just feels really unnatural. Um, so you see the mobile design, especially with data viz, people stack charts and bands and things on top of each other rather than side by side like you would in a regular dashboard. Um, and for that reason, you're designed for a single column layout. Now, I've read some best practices around like mobile design um, and they say that the, the font size should be at minimum 11 points so users can read it from a typical viewing distance. Uh, the last thing you want to be doing is having your phone like right up <laughs> close to your face to try and read like small text. It's just not a nice experience. And I think with mobile more than desktop, people are likely to switch off quickly, right? If something isn't interacting the way that they would like or they can't read the text, so it's just not a nice experience, people are unlikely to continue and they'll just switch back to the desktop. Um, and then choose a typeface that works well in multiple sizes and weights. So Roberto is a good one, but any sans serif uh, font would do um, just so that it's consistent and it, you know, it's easy to read it regardless of the size. Number three is make buttons finger friendly. So while you're using your thumb to move around, quite often you use your finger to click those buttons. And you need to remember that um, your finger, people have fat finger syndrome, right? Your fingers are bigger than mouse pointers and it can be quite tricky at times to touch like small buttons on your phone with your finger, um, especially for men, I think. And I'm not, I'm not saying that in a, you know, a gender like kind of way, but that I think I used to work in a company where we had engineers using PDAs and these were big like butch men 
and they just constantly like press the wrong buttons on their PDAs with their big fingers. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a classic picture here, but make sure that your any buttons or anything that you're designing are, are large enough so that someone can easily touch them with their finger. Uh, the recommended minimum size is 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Um, and consider the distance between any touch elements. So if you're putting buttons next to each other, make sure they're further enough away that you're not gonna accidentally hit the wrong one because uh, in, in this case here that like, you've got a save and a cancel the last thing you want to do is cancel by mistake and not save you don't want that splash damage of your thumb accidentally <laughs> spilling over into the next button exactly um number, number four create predictable navigation so people like uh predictability they like when we interact with websites they tend to work in a, in a similar way you tend to have a navigation bar at the top people are used to hamburger menus when when they see that hamburger menu which is like the three lines and um, they know what to do with it and um, so it's it's best to keep with familiar navigation patterns and designs don't try and reinvent the wheel and create a jazzy new like, menu icon that people won't necessarily understand because it, it like you hear is it won't work very effectively um, try and limit the number of navigation options as well. Like the last thing you want to do is create a menu where you have 20 items to try that someone has to then scroll through to find what they need. So imagine in Tableau having a, a list of business units and you've got like 25 to go through on a phone. It's not going to be a fun experience. Um, when you design interactive elements, um, make sure they look like interactive elements. But at the same time, don't design elements that look interactive that actually aren't. Um, I've seen Viz's before, when I was judging Iron Viz this year, I saw a Viz where somebody had created some buttons. Um, they looked like buttons, I wanted to click them, I clicked them and nothing happened. So uh, they weren't actually buttons. Um, so if you're going to design a button, make it look like a button and make it do something, not just have it there just for the sake of it. For those of you at home, are you noticing that this is tricky? Like there's a <laughs> lot to balance in, in a and minimal it, real estate. And it's so different, right, to creating for like regular dashboards. Um, it's just you, you've got to completely switch that mindset and break all the rules that you're so used to doing when we design for desktop. Um, another thing is around navigation is make it easy for users to return to the home page. So I've been interacting with visitors before, I've got stuck, right? So I've, I've clicked from the home page to something else, something else, and it's like, oh, you know, I want to actually go, I want to go back to where I began and you can't. So you have to come out the whole thing and, and start again. Um, so yeah, just easy. It's quite easy to put like a home, like a little house button or something where people can easily go back to the beginning. And uh, number five, the final one is just keep charts simple, right? So if you're looking at something on a mobile, it tends to be supplementary to another dashboard that you're using. So it might be that you're on the go, you're looking at this dashboard um, on your phone just to see what happened yesterday or what happened last week. Um, but then you're going to go in the office and, you know, look at this dashboard properly on your laptop. And um, so for that reason, it, it's, it's unlikely you're going to need to include these like big line charts with like loads of data points for the last 12 months and or every every day and um, because it's just not necessary it needs to be just concise information on your phone so for that reason you know keep it simple um, and as well limit the use of like axes labels mark labels other small elements and any text really just keep it really simple uh, if you think about the charts you might get on your banking app or maybe you've got an app uh, for like Fitbit or something like that if you look at them they're actually really really simple um, whenever you're in that environment you tend to know what you're looking at so if you're looking at a, a chart that shows your heart rate you already know it's a chart about your heart rate um, and like it is I just label like the, the high high point and the low point but not every single point that your heart rate like kind of differed um, so yeah just keep it simple um, less clutter the better um, as always um, but yeah you got anything to add to that, Zach? I mean, I think for a lot of us, me included, this is your first, likely your first pass at a mobile design. Yeah. There's a lot of new considerations to take into account. I know you and I have both looked at these in advance prior to this. So I just want to say, you know, uh, wow. Like, first of all, for everyone willing to just jump in and do this, because it's definitely like an entirely different skill set than what you're used to working with on a dashboard. So um, I think we see a lot of interesting ideas that people put out there and I'm excited to get into the review. Yeah, and I'd say as well that so many people said after doing this exercise that they found it difficult, right? They they hadn't designed for mobile before and the first attempt they struggled um, and they, you know, just thinking through these things, it requires a, like a different thought process and different design process to what we're used to. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to get stuck in uh, and look, I think we've got about 15 visits to go through today. So I'm not going to do or I don't intend to do a marathon three hour, 40 minute call like I did with Sam on the last one. Literally, we were up till like about 1 a.m. Um, 
uh, doing this. So I want to keep it short and snappy. So uh, let's do it. Um, I'm just so just because we're doing mobile visits as well. Um, I'm conscious we need to look at them on a phone. So what I'm going to do is actually going to mirror my screen of my mobile and we're going to look at how they appear on my phone. Um, and as I said before, I have an iPhone 8. It's very old. Um, so, I mean, I know when we're designing for mobile and Tableau, you can pick different makes and uh, models of phones. Um, so if you designed for maybe an iPhone 10, it might look different on my phone. My, I've not got a big screen or anything like that. It's pretty standard. Um, so that may explain some of the differences but um it's always good to test these things out because you never know like what phone people are going to be using when they look at your work yeah so i used a i have a pixel 3a that's what i used for my review so we both use different devices to look at this yeah. so it's going to be kind of interesting and we like sarah said we're going to be displaying it on mobile because the experience you get actually looking at mobile on mobile especially with tableau is different than when you what you get if you look at it on a web page itself so yeah. this will be interesting for a lot of people yeah right All right, so first up, we have a viz by Abby. So Abby is a lovely Zen master from Nigeria. She's done a viz on the net profit across the top 10 Nigerian banks. So it's super simple, it's just one chart. Um, we've got the, the bar chart there. So she's, she's highlighted the top three banks um, in a different color to make them stand out. Um, there's not much interactivity here. We've only got a tool tip. So if I click on Zenith Bank, for instance, I will I should get, it decides to reload, um, a tool tip there. Now I would say that, on I tried this on desktop and it looks fine, but on when you're using mobile, the tool tip looks huge, right? Um, so I think that's always one thing to consider. Now, one thing I always do in Tableau, I don't know about you, Zach, but I always turn off my command buttons. And those are the buttons that come up at the top. So you can see keep only, exclude, view data, etc. Um, so I'd recommend if you are designing for mobile, then just switch them off and just clean up your tooltips to make sure that it's the date, the uh, the text is a, is a decent size, but also that you're not um, you're not getting all that kind of text that you get with Tableau sometimes when you're using calculations or table calculations like you can see here. Yeah, the main thing you're getting from that tooltip, in addition to what's already displayed, is that percentage piece. And I guess the question is, is it worth having the tooltip for that versus maybe displaying it or just leaving it out entirely since sort of the big picture that those top three are already in the top 60% are displayed. I mean, it's very clean, it's very readable, it cuts right to the point of what you wanna know. Um, like we said, there's not really um, any real interactivity. That wasn't a mandate of this either though. No, It was no. a, uh, hey, make it for mobile. And this works on mobile. Like yeah. it's, yeah. I don't even need to move, like scroll or anything. It's right there. Um, yeah, I would say, I mean, in this case, I probably wouldn't even use a tooltip because um, we've stating that it's six, top 60% already. We can see the values on the bars. Um, I don't think the tooltip really adds all that much. Um, but no, great work, Abby. And thank you for entering. So I think it was your first time entering IronQuest. So she finally caved in to me, um, complaining to her to get involved. Um, so right, next one. This is so weird because I'm presenting from my phone. So let me come out and go into Google Sheets. Next one we have here should load that this has been really temperamental for me today so i hope it works this is by Al alosius is that how you say his name i'm not sure i'm sorry if i got it completely wrong um but we had a conversation about this one on twitter so what he did was he tr he basically posted to linkedin every single day and tracked uh, what he was posting about um and also the engagement that he got on each post so each of these squares i believe is a day and they are colored by, I think, engagement. I'm, I might be wrong. I believe it's engagement as well. Yeah. Again, we've got the, the command buttons there. So I'd, again, I'd go back to my previous point, just t turn them off if you can. Um, so we have got in some um, like navigation, like arrows. So I'm gonna click the arrow at the bottom right. And then so we, this one actually has quite a sequence, if I recall. It steps through quite a few pages. And I kind yeah. of appreciated that aspect of like, hey, I'm going to parse this out into smaller chunks. 
actually i i think for me like a lot of this like that first chart almost doesn't work as well on mobile other than a purely visual thing just because you have to like touch each one to get the value other yeah. than as like a highlight table to say like look at this day in particular it was good but i think as you sort of progress through this it's kind of cool to see that uh, he decided to use the navigation to his advantage for that refresh on the screen to just refill it each time with new data and information yeah what i would love on that first page is just um some just some text to call out you know my the day i posted that i got the most engagement was this day and maybe a reason why because i when i was looking at the landing page and i was looking at the engagement rates not only did i want to know why but i also wanted to see like what he posted on those days so what was it that was so popular on in april right that that got him all those views so we have the bio page here, which I think, you know, it fits nicely on the screen. Um, I've not got to do any scrolling um, horizontally, which is great. And I've, I've got the consistent arrow button so I can go back to uh, the home page and then forward again. So I'm going to go forward and let's see what happens. I will say I don't necessarily love the centered text on these blocks. Um, I, my, one of my, uh, actually both my daughters now are dyslexic. Ooh. But yeah, um, I know particularly for, for some people with like reading uh, reading issues, it makes it that much more difficult to jump line to line as you navigate down the page. I think it works really well for titles and sort of call outs and stuff like that. Yeah. But as soon as you start hitting multiple lines, I think it like the head tracking uh, gets slower for most people and the readability declines. Yeah, I would left align it in most cases, as, unless, I mean, the, like here, the data explanation, that, that title works yeah. fine. But I think everything else, it's just easier to have that kind of, anchor to the left right or to the right um personally i'd probably break this chunk of text into two just into two different paragraphs separate them just so it's 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 more um pleasing to the eyes so that you, you see that you see a chunk of text when it's broken out it's it's more digestible right yep so i'm clicking through to the next bit so we can so right here we've got the uh Part of the titles just cut off there ah that didn't happen for me that's interesting, mm, interesting. yeah hey mobile people it's like uh, let me tell you each device is finicky um so it's fascinating to see that i got a different experience here than sarah did because i think that looked fine on mine yeah now right, it says hover over the different types of posts for and all the different things i'm gonna hover over adobe illustrator and so he said he's using adobe illustrator to create something okay it's fine um, that you see that tooltip again is in in comparison to everything else it looks really big on the phone right well, I'm sure it looked fine on desktop and in terms of experience uh, this part feels a little bit clunky just because in terms of the navigation like you don't really get to pick where that box is gonna pop up yeah it just sort of occupies the center of the page and then when you unclick it you have to sort of look at where you were in the list and choose where to go next yeah, and I'm not saying this as a, as a slight in any way against this viz. These are just things to sort of be aware of when designing for mobile. Because I mean, this is tricky. Like, I think for most of us, we're not motive, mobile native designers. And, you know, Tableau might not be a mobile native tool. So mm -hmm. we're sort of uh, adapting something that was designed for bigger screens and using it on smaller ones. And as we go, trying to figure out what works best. Yeah. I, I, in this case as well, I've left align everything. It looks like I don't even think that they're middle aligned. There's like some, it, it's just some weird, I don't know if that's Tableau just like messing it up. This like, looks like the alignment's a little bit off. But. It's funky. I wonder if there's spaces or something, but yeah, it's, it doesn't, uh, it, it's like an off center alignment. I don't know yeah, what it is. Slightly to the, to the left, right? Um, I'm going to keep navigating through. I do appreciate the navigation buttons. They work like really well, as you'd expect. Yep. And they were um, good size too. Yeah. And they're in the right place, right? My thumb, so I'm not reaching to the top. Um, so we've got the uh, the post count. So simple chart. It's great. I don't know if there's a tool to on it. There is, but it's fine again. Back to the points we said before. And this text is left aligned as well. So I think that it shows the difference, right? If we look at this compared to the other text we've seen. And he's, um, you know, bolded some, some keywords, which I think is fine. And then I'm going to keep going. There's a lot to this viz. <laughs> yeah, this one in particular, like if this were on a normal page, it would still have a little bit of scrolling because um, it's yeah. you know, a lot of editorial along with the charts. Yeah, but I do appreciate how we've got the navigation and how it's broken out and I'm not just continuously scrolling down, right? It's in digestible chunks. 
so medium post engagement and that's fine yep right. and i also appreciate sort of the sparse use of color on that um there, there was yeah. no need to add anything to it so you yeah, didn't and it looks good yeah i like i do like the black and whites it's super simple and then we're gonna uh dive into some individual post metrics so we have the um, engagement overview by date. I will say I had some issues with this in terms of uh, how it performed technically. So at the bottom, there was a click here for something and all yeah. of those sort of loaded a page that didn't populate for me. I don't know if it, it might work for you. Right, we'll um, see. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's gonna work. Yeah, so there were a couple pages like this that had those at the bottom and I, I tried each of them and I couldn't get it to work. And I'm like, I can, maybe it's my phone, I don't know. Because that's always a consideration in these, right? Like, especially if we're operating on different phone operating systems or yeah. different browsers even. So I use Chrome, you're using Chrome now. Um, yeah, because so. I my phone, I wouldn't usually use Chrome on my phone. I don't know about you. Um, I mean, I, I've got iPhone, but I would usually just use Safari. But So this is weird for me, using a different browser. Always Chrome. Always Chrome on my laptop, but always Safari on my phone. But then I'm an Apple person, so. Um, yeah, the, just on this one on the dates, they're looking like they're, they're cutting off the 2020. So I, I, generally speaking, when I'm doing charts like this, I would um, show the date as the, the month and the day. So like uh, January the 1st, for instance, or Jan 01, something like that. And just, I think it's a little bit easier to digest than having that, the full date, right? The year, month, day. Yeah. I'm going to keep going for the navigation. I think, I mean, I, I think our points ring true for this one as well. It's very similar to the last one. I'm not going to click on the click here to view because I suspect that <laughs> it will do the same thing to me. Um, let's click through. And again, dates cut off. No need to yeah, worry about yeah. that. But I like one thing I appreciate is there are a couple of navigation views uh, in the set that we're looking at today. And for this one, there's like a hey, this is the end. Some of them yeah. just sort of terminate in the final page and don't actually have something to tell you that this is the end. So I found myself yeah. looking for a button at the bottom, like, I think it's the end. Is it? Is it the last thing? Yeah. Um, once I, but I would say once I get here, I can't go back, right? So there's no, if I was like, oh, actually, let me have a look at that thing that I just saw, there's, I'm, I'm now stuck um, on the thank you page. So this is one thing to consider, like I said at the beginning about putting in a little home button or something where you can go back to the beginning. Let me ask you this as we load up the next one, Sarah. Do you have yeah. choose your own adventure books in the UK? We do. Yeah, like I remember Mike Cisneros did the Viz, right? Do you remember exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah. So I uh, I bought a board game of it the other day and I was playing it with my Oh, wow. Friends. Choose your own adventures. Like I think particularly with mobile view and navigation, you have to think of it as a choose your own adventure in that choose your own adventures often end with you dying at some point. And uh, it, you have to keep in mind the last page you were on to revert. You go back to your save state in your book and say, okay, what's the last choice I made before I died? I don't want to die. So like, if you have a dead end in your, in your, you know, in your workbook or whatever, make sure that there's a way to navigate back out of yes. that. And you're not just dropping someone in the creepy basement with the robots. Like make sure they have a way to escape exactly. back to the place they want to be. I love that analogy. It's great. All right, so we've got a vid here by Daniel uh, on Clay Thompson. Now, I know nothing about um, basketball, so I'm going to rely on you here, Zach, with your I American also know sports nothing about basketball, knowledge. And I'm right. American and a man. So. Okay, so we've got a vid about Clay Thompson, who I'm sure is amazing. We're about to find out. Um, he's the second best shooter in NBA history. I really like this vid. So I think Daniel initially posted um, a vid just showing like his, uh, like the shots, um, like the basketball court kind of view. Uh, and that's and then, in here, but we'll get yeah. to that. But I appreciate the sort of colors and the thought that went into this uh, from the beginning. It's a very readable yeah. despite having a similarly colored background. I really like this. It's, it's a really nice design. Um, it does look like there's some text cut off at the top. So it says navigate through this viz too. And then it cuts off again. That may be just because of the way I'm the, my phone. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, nice concise bit at the bottom as well to say like where the data came from. So it actually came from Zach, funny enough. Um, and then um, navigation buttons where we where we like to see them. So I'm going to click on that arrow and see where we go. So I'm actually looking at this as we speak. I'm going to see if I get the similar experience. Okay. That.
but I, I definitely like uh, the use of essentially like a giant pipe at the top to separate the headers mm -hmm. to use the text. It's nice. And I, I think um, very uh, concise. Yeah, it doesn't cut off on mine, coincidentally. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, once again, going back to the your experience may vary by device. Yeah, totally. So we've got a chart here that shows um, Clay Thompson and um, he's third in 3%. I'm not 100% sure what that means. I'm sure that it's completely clear to any basketball fans out there. And it's by no means a, a, um, a judgment of the Viz. The Viz is great. Um, but we can see here that Clay's sitting at the bottom of this chart. Um, in this case, I think, you know, the labels are there. Um, I might consider just labeling maybe like Ray Allen and then and then Clay Thompson and then just taking out the labels in between. I'm not sure if they're necessary. We have got tooltips, I think. So we can hover over and see that information if we need to. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, for a lot of these charts, I think uh, in terms of their context, they're self-explanatory. So unless there's like an actual load of supplemental detail, detail there to help fill it out, just turn those things off. Like, no yeah. Need yeah. Particularly with mobile because you're accidentally going to fire them off more than likely. Yeah. Then we've got another Viz that looks at um, the shooters again and this time Clay's third. So I like how he's keeping that consistent yellow um, just to highlight Clay in each Viz. Um, I really like this chart actually. I think it's good. Um, I'm just questioning what the red means. Also, yeah, uh, the, the red as well for me, it, it sh I, Okay, based on what I'm looking at, it looks like it means it's above that uh, median line there. Yeah. That threshold. Um, but uh, let's see. I'm gonna. I, I'm, it's really weird. Yeah, yours. I'm, yours is still cutting off more text in the top portion. From what I'm not saying. even dropping. Yeah. Not even dropping below forty percent. So that's what that's saying. So that forty percent is that indicator, and unfortunately for you, you're you're losing that as a uh, descriptor there. Right. Um. Yeah, I'll just make that clear, like what the difference in colors mean. Um, with that text, it makes more sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, with the, just one thing I've noticed, we've got the, so we've got the Clay Thompson, like a title at the top, and then on the left, we've got kind of a box that says like career. And um, the last one said that the three um, P percentage, I think it was. Um, we can actually use, that's actually a filter. So if I click on it, I can switch to season instead. Some nice animation. And look at that. That was smooth. I mean, a lot nice. of times animations are a little chunky. Like that one, that one were a little nice. Especially because it's on my phone as well. Right. Um, yeah. I'll just make it clear that that is, that's actually a filter, right? So this is where we go back to like making sure that if you've got interactive elements, make the obvious they're interactive elements. Because I kind of just thought that was a, a subtitle. I made the same mistake. Yeah. But it's really cool. I'm glad I found it. Let's go back to career. It's really slick. Yeah, that looks real nice. Good job. All right, I'm going to keep going. So I one thing I want to call out about this yellow, this yellow is a really good choice and the consistency throughout the Viz is great. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if you um, if you play computer games or, or video games at all, yellow will be used as a pretty attentive attribute to subtly indicate things you can interact with. Like it'll never be spelled out. But if you start paying attention, you'll notice that a lot of the things that are sort of meant to draw your attention, like, hey, this is a wall you could hold, will be yellow. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, red's a little obvious, and particularly with something like this, we don't use red all the time, because that, yeah. you know, we associate with bad. Um, so I think the yellow is an excellent choice, because it really pops against this background and keeps that theme going throughout the biz. And it goes back to his team, right? Because mm -hmm. that's like the jersey, or part of the jersey color, at least. I really like this. You can, you know, it's really simple to understand. Um, I really like the background as well, like the like the wooden kind of effect. So this is the original Viz, I think. Um, so we have the uh, the shot chart, and I think that this bit is interactive. So if I do break breakdown, I believe it will change, which is super cool. Yeah, that looks great in animation. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the shots. How fun is that? Like I'm enjoying this on mobile. Like the, the animations yeah. like are, re are really smooth on my phone as well, which I'm just no no shade thrown towards anyone. I'm used to the, the animations not quite performing like they are when I'm developing them. I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. And then later I'm like, I'm taking out these animations. This is going to look bad. No, I, 
this is I really like this it's really good and we're not stuck right so we've got that arrow to go back um, this I would like you know it would be nice if there was a home button so I could go back to the beginning um, but at least I can click back through um, I, I really like how he's kept the um, the data source and the his name throughout as well it's not just on that first screen and that's a nice touch yeah very nice well done Dana. we got uh, tool tips on the on those yeah okay that's cool I didn't okay I didn't actually realize they were basketballs until you click on them because because of the shape used um, yeah you can if, just if it were like a transparent it. PNG it would have like done the details of the basketball but it would have been transparent otherwise yeah but in this case well it might be I don't know it's they so I think they are tell. you can can you zoom in yeah you can there you go you can kind of see yeah yeah I mean it's it's fun I think it kind of gets lost on mobile unfortunately yeah it actually works really well on desktop as well this is so it's, it's good to see and that's great like if you can make it work for both uh my mine for this uh iron quest i intentionally made it mobile only in fact if you attempt to access mine on your desktop it pops up just a screen that says please open this on mobile so there is no yeah it, it was intentionally formatted for mobile consumption only and, yeah uh, i'm gonna make you do it all right so the next phase is by fee gordon um it's jll the best is here of course it is right it you is. have to say that how much does she pay you <laughs> i mean i don't think anything i think i, I think it's just the no uh, so you could give us some secret insight on this viz is it actually used is it real um yeah i mean the, i haven't seen the mobile version before but um fee helped sort of connect uh jll with uh, our own uh Ultrix Adventure. So Ultrix has its own sort of training stuff online. And as you progress through that, if you submit your your progress, you'll see that I'm not on here yet. Uh, you'll be able to see that, um, you know, where you're falling in terms of sort of the greater team's progress. And it's just sort of a fun way of gamifying everyone's personal trainings and stuff like that and yeah. getting people engaged. And, you know, it's just like a light, fun competition uh, just to say like, hey, have you done exercise, whatever? I'm uh, currently just starting my uh, Ultrix training. I'm usually a SQL guy, and I'm on the capstone project for uh, the first round of stuff. So maybe I'll be popping up on here soon. Awesome! It's it's like the um, the other one she did. So the like the Tableau Quest one that Fee originally came up with, where you have I guess you have different activities and tasks to do, and then once you get past that stage, you get a badge, and then you can progress on, right? We um, have that as well. We have a capstone for Tableau. And okay. So yeah, so we've got a nice introduction to explain what it is. You've got you can reach out to the leaders. I checked this yesterday; it works. I'm not going to click it now, but those those links do work if you click on the buttons. I think that's really obvious design, right? So if I click on a, a LinkedIn logo or a Twitter logo, it takes me to that person's page, um, which is the, the kind of the interactivity we would expect. Um, I'm going to go up to here to the sample leaderboard tab. I don't think there's any navigation to that tab. Um, so you have to use the tabs at the top. So then we see the, the badges, which I absolutely love. <laughs> They're awesome. Um, and then obviously this is all anonymized, but you can see kind of like where people are at on their learning path. Um, and they're the kind of challenges you get involved in, right? So you lead a brown bag session. It looks um, a little bit better on your mine. I have a little bit of a bar on the left side. So, I mean, all that goes back to device formatting and how you're never going to get like a totally uniform experience on everything. Yeah. But I mean, it's really smooth. I appreciate that she turned off the tooltips on all the stuff that it's not needed for. Uh, yep. That's a very, uh, very fee move. So yeah. Attention to detail. Are these reference lines? Are these like targets or something? The, those like letter brown bag session we've got a line oh that's a target so there's right. a sort of advanced to the next level there are objectives that you have to uh, reach so to reach the first level you pretty much have to just complete that online training but after okay. that there's you know do so many of the uh, low level daily exercises and so many of the intermediate then do so many brown bag sessions and that sort of thing okay. so it's a uh, a threshold for you to reach for you to move on to the next level I really like, you know, how everything is, is just all um, vertical. We can just keep scrolling. We've got the leaderboard there. So JJ, whoever JJ is, is in the lead. Um, and he's got like a, or he or she has got a, a badge. Um, they have their score, which I think is nice. Um, I mean, it's not really any interactivity. You don't need it, right? 
No. Um, and again, I'm saying this with with inside baseball knowledge I have on this. So if someone were to just pick this up, uh, they may not be aware of some of those things. So yeah, maybe, I think uh, it's yeah. quite intuitive, right? So and we've got the different colors for different badge levels. So we've got your the six experts at the top there in gray. The pros are in blue. The uh, is it the apprentices are in in like a peachy color, and then the rookies are in yellow. I guess you're a rookie. Are you? I'm about to be a rookie. Like, you're, I'm not not even, a, you're not even a rookie yet. I'm nothing, Sarah. <laughs> you need to go out there. Come on. It's coming. <laughs> but no, I like it. I think it's, I, I really like the uh, the logo design as well. I think that, um, this, uh, like the mountains, I think it's really cool. Like, yeah. why can't work be fun? Exactly. Um, no, good job. Okay, so the next fizz is by Jason. And this one is looking at Fortnite versus our schools. So this this image, by the way, scared me when I first saw this. It's like, I have played Fortnite a little bit. Like I was terrible at it. I died like straight away. Um, but um, I don't know the, who the characters are. And it's like, well, okay. Um, so basically what Jason did is he compared funding that, well, that ba basically looked at the revenue that Fortnite, the game, um, got during COVID versus the funding that went to schools in the US. Which is a really interesting comparison. Um, but yeah, I'm here for it. Personally, I'm always uh, fascinated to find Fortnite makes any money because it's free to play. Exactly. Like, literally, but you then get you the have exact to... same experience unless you want your character to look differently. Or you can buy like dance moves, right? I'm so baffled by it all. I'm so, so you, old. You can, uh, yeah, you, my, my, the kids at my daughter's school, like the, the, the boys are crazy for it. So um, I, I downloaded it because it was free. You, you get dropped out of a helicopter, right? I think that's the, and that you that you get plonked somewhere, and then you just go around and shoot people. So that, that's kind of how I interpret it to be. But then, I in I every just hide, and then I make it second every time. And then well, get you kept hiding when it's boring. Like you're just hiding, and you like no one's coming for you. It's, it's like incredibly you, boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, I ran out of bullets. So I'll just like fire at like random things. Um, but anyway, um, so we're looking at like you know. Um, the bud local government budgets um, and then how they compare to Fortnite so in the first chart we're comparing um, the budget of I guess that's a, a county in, in in New York um, yes. so the the, bl the blue so the green line is the, the budget for the school the the red line or the red pink line is Fortnite Fortnite's and in this revenue. case, there are a couple tweaks I might have made to this, and they're mostly just visual formatting. Like, you can uh, change the uh, dates on the bottom, so it's just the first three characters of mm -hmm. each month, and to sort of eliminate some of that. And uh, in terms of the colors, the red and green might be fine otherwise, but against the blue background, they're kind of like, mm. So you could probably just ditch most of the color entirely, um, and also turn off the tooltips on the red line, just because... Uh, yeah. In this case, it's more of a spark line where you're just trying to show like, hey, look, the big story here is that around the time of COVID, all of a sudden things changed and uh, Fortnite's now exceeding the budget. Yeah. All the kids are on there buying their dance moves, right? And they're, they're cool outfits. Oh, they're doing virtual school. <laughs> they are. They're in virtual school, Sarah. <laughs> they're not playing Fortnite. Of course not. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I agree. I mean, again, we've got the command buttons that are popping up. Um, I'd probably label the... I mean, I would consider labeling the, the start and the end of the bar uh, of the lines and then taking off the revenue axes. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. And then because that would just free up some space because we are when, when you design for mobile, right? It's so limited. I would also remove the that the month header, which you see uh, just underneath the uh, I can't point to it, but underneath the um, where it says Fortnite revenue. I, by default, I always switch those off in Tableau. I just think I, don't, I think they're called headers, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh God, hang on. It's my I failed on my phone. Um, it's now. It looks like it's suddenly like resized the view. What happened? I scrolled down and that that highlight state thing um popped up. Mine's good, by the way. I haven't messed up any. All right, I fixed it. Hang on. I think. 
I did fix it. All right, it's, it's looking okay on my phone. Phone. Um, it might update in a minute, I think. Or maybe I've lost the connection. Hang on. So as we scroll further down, uh, we sort of continue with that red green color with the red being a sort of above the threshold. Um, mm. And you can select your individual state using the, uh, I might have, like, this is actually a search. I might have done, oh, it is a drop down, never mind. It is, but it's, this is, it's zooming in when I, because um, it's wanting me to type a state, right? So on, on my phone, I think that's where the experience kind of fell down a little bit because now, my phone's directing me to that highlight state um like search so i type in say california see i i get the you know it pops up your your drop down but it also automatically pops up your keyboard so yeah that's what i mean disappears natively i mean it's like i jokingly called this iron quest the happening because <laughs> everyone is going to like try to work on apps and as far as i know none of us are app designers and tableau isn't made to be like an app so it's all of us trying to make this behave like we want it to. And yeah. just some of the fascinating things that come out of that. Like I would not have expected that to happen. And then I'm yeah. just like frustrated by it. I'm like, but then mm. it makes sense, right? Cause it's a, it's that kind of filter. You have to type in something. Um, so if I, I mean, it does it on my phone. See, you've got the, the keyboard pop up. Um, I start, I wrote, I typed in the first couple of letters of California and that's why it's then like zooming in. Um, we now have that that highlighted um which is great um again i'm not what so we've we're looking at um comparing who budgeted more than fortnite's most recent monthly revenue and who budgeted less um because we've got like that highlight action it looks like the the red or the pink dots are now a darker red just so they stand out more against the other um, states so I'll just be careful about that and again I think this would look a lot better if we if that if the background wasn't blue just a white background I think one of the things about this chart in particular this chart would work a lot better on desktop and on mobile it's a little it's a little frustrating and I'm not again saying like you messed up I'm saying it's frustrating because like I want to click on more of the dots and they're, they're so small I'm small I'm like <laughs> I think it's you know I, mean, I can zoom in like I can pinch to zoom and then you know select them and stuff yeah but um if you were like looking for your particular school district or whatever on there and you pulled up California you're going to be wading through a sea of those selects so maybe do like a sub select for school district also like just do two layers of that filter yeah yeah I agree um I think it goes back to the point we made before around you know just keep it simple for for mobile I think in this case there's so many marks there's so many things you can interact with it's it's a high risk that you'll end up clicking on the wrong one because I can guarantee if I try to click on one of those those um those circles I'm going to click the wrong one and for the bottom chart you actually got the better experience this time than I did so all of your descriptors went to two lines and mine right. truncated around revenue like it's like re blah, and cuts off the rest so uh, you got the better mobile experience this time than I did. But at the bottom, I've got the data. Did your data sources work? Because I've got the, the bottom line cuts off. So budgets from other schools. Most recent fiscal data yes, is for the... Yes, as well. Okay. Just I get more of the next line. You don't get any of the next line. No. So, it's, so, it's so weird, isn't it? So weird. But I, yeah, I, I almost wish we'd asked people to say what mobile device they tested on when they were developing at the bottom of their viz. Yeah. Just to know because it's like, from what we're seeing, we're using two different devices at the same time. We're both looking at this and we're getting two different experiences. Like it all could come down to what device you used for your testing to see, you know, what it looked like. Yeah. And tradition, I mean, generally speaking, you're going to use your device, right? So, and I mean, I, I doubt very many people like ask a friend to test on their device as well. Um, Cause you just don't kind of think about that thing. No one likes me that much. Like, hey, will you test my mobile thing? No one cares. They're not doing that for me. Um, just one other thing on this face. I, there's a lot of borders. We've got like a, a really um, like a thick black border around the data sources. We've got kind of a pinky red border around this uh, Santa Anna unified um, chart. And I think there's some more. We've got another like thick black one at the top. I'll probably just take them away um, and then left align the text that like we spoke about before. Um, 
just and then also consider the the font sizes i think they switch around a little bit so i've got some text in bold some text not interesting story though like i never would have yeah. thought of this angle so it, it really is yeah all right next one we've got this by kavita And this okay. one for me, oh, well, it's not working for me. This is why so I, this I'm, one for me doesn't work on mobile. And if you can see what I'm holding up here, it, it's separated out. So there's okay. a tool form at the top that she created with some nice layouts. I'm going to search for her and try and find it. So yeah, what's it on? What's the topic? Um, it's like a, a business card. So she created like a lot of people doing interactive resumes. She did like an interactive business card. So if you pull it up on uh, your desktop or your laptop and look at it, it looks like a nice, um, nice little mobile business card about the size of the shape of your phone. However, if you pull it up on your actual phone, it splits all those elements out into pieces. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay. Um, oh yeah, it's my. There's a delay on my uh, screen share. That's, that's what I see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I, I saw, I looked at this previously on my desktop and it is like a nice business card. I really like the, the concept. Um, and this this happens so frequently, right? When people don't switch off that, that phone layer and then don't check what that phone layer has done to their viz, you go in here, and when, especially when you've got floating elements, it kind of just stacks them. I think in the order that they appear in the viz, which I think is what's happened here. So what I did in designing mine, and I'm doing this as a total mobile novice, I designed in the phone layer, and then for the desktop layer, that's where I put my thing, hey, you have to look at the phone layer. I'm not letting you see anything here. Yeah. I love that idea. I don't know idea. if that's the proper way, but that was my sort of, uh, at, like thinking as an old school IT guy, like I used to be, I'm like, there's a fail state here. And the fail state is they open this on their desktop and it looks like all messed up. And I know yeah. people are gonna do that. So I'm gonna try to find a way to not let that be a possibility. Yeah. In this case, I wonder if Kavita maybe developed it in a desktop view and sort of looked at the mobile view and it looked good on like on desktop, but not actually pulling it up on the phone itself. Like sometimes that can like, for me to designing mine, I kept uploading it, looking at my phone and be like, oh, that looks off and like doing it again. Like, yeah. Thinking. Yeah, I, I, I suspect that's what's happened. Like, um... But yeah, at least we know now. All right, uh, next one is oh, the desktop. You looks very nice. So just give yeah. it some tweaks and mix it up for a moment. I like the concept like of it. it. It's really cool. This is by Kamal. Okay, so I'm conscious you've seen some of these before because you did the Project Health Fids review as well, and I think some people did a double whammy. Um, where they did the the greenhouse gas emission um, project health is and iron quest together which i'm all for that's a very clever way of doing things at two birds one stone because i run on copier coke sarah you do i did <laughs> i've learned from, i've learned my lesson <laughs> you, yeah you stopped that nonsense yeah. yeah doing two of these in the same month was it was a little ambitious of me and uh I, I will say i did not see the mobile version or I, at least i didn't look at it on mobile when we reviewed it with Lindsay. okay so, so you have seen experience. this biz but you've seen the desktop version okay correct all right so this is looking at greenhouse gas emission um i like the simple image at the top the title um the text looks great except it's cutting off on my phone i don't know if it's doing the same thing for you nope i'm good no how far does it go down because i was going to say there's a you know you've, we've got a bit of a gap here, I have the I same gap, but I have the entire paragraph. So it, okay. it continues and completes on mine, and then we transition right into those teal bars. Okay. The first thing I'd say is it's not it's not immediately obvious what those bars are like um, are showing them. Like, you know, it's, there's no title or anything. It would be good to say total greenhouse gas emission or like the sources of the greenhouse gas emission or or something like that. And I'm and not quite sure what I'm supposed to click to swap the view. Yeah, so it says click to swap the view. Okay. I'm going to click a bar. And didn't. That's not filtering anything, is it? <laughs> I don't know if we, we're doing something wrong or maybe there's like an action bug or oh. like that. Didn't. 
transition. It changed. Oh. It changes the one at the bottom. Ah, okay. So yeah, I think in that case, like, there's, it's it's counting too much on the fact that someone has scrolled this all the way to the top of their phone. Because I mean, for me, when I get to that part, I start clicking on it immediately, and I don't think of scrolling that. So it's at the very top, and I can see yeah. uh, what I last time called the Tom Brady deflated football. Um, because it's, um, you know, it's got this nice radial chart, but unfortunately on mobile, at least for mine, see yours is a little bit better. Mine is a little bit more of an oval and it's sort of yeah. sacrificing some of that, that cool circle aspect. But I think this was very inspired by like the, uh, Apple watch aesthetic of the, the nested radial, uh, spiral circles, which might be good for like two or three things. But I think on mobile, we might have like 10 or so at once right now. And I don't know how much you can get out of an individual one at this size. Yeah, I've seen a couple of mobile ones as well where it's condensed the, the circle into a different shape. Um, it's, it's a little bit unpredictable around what, what Tableau would do and what the device will do when you view it. Um, so yeah, and in this case, the, the radial is showing the um, subsector breakdown, right? So... Um, and you're also getting some of that up above with the set actions. So the set actions, I've been playing with them. First of all, they're animated and they move really smooth. So I'm really, I'm really excited by that. Uh, with the drill downs, however, after about the first level, sometimes like the text sort of bunches up in those little boxes. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, mm. you know, I don't necessarily love that, but that might just be a limitation of mobile um, that you you accept. That, like if if someone really wants that. It's like, okay, well, it's, there's going to be a little aesthetic you're sacrificing in order to make that a possibility. Yeah. On my phone, I'd say this viz is particularly small. So the text, it doesn't look so bad on my on the screen. But when I'm looking at it on the phone, the text is quite hard to read. And and as you can see, the the uh, the, the text with this, this, as you say, the set actions is kind of um, been squashed. And it, that's so hard to design for. I've, I've run into the same problem before. I've been doing it for a client and they had these these long kind of um, org names and it, it's just impossible to, to do it with, with set actions like that. I'm not going to lie, I've been doing some pinch to zoom on this because I'm 39. So like my, my eyes ain't what they used to be. Yeah. I'm getting there, Zach. Don't worry. I used to have 2020 vision. I don't think it's that good anymore. Not since I, I had found laser. Tableau. Like this is the best I've had. Do you you had your eyes lasered? Oh yeah, like 12 years ago. Oh wow. Did Where you used to wear it? glasses all the time? I know we're going completely off. Topic. I used to wear. Yeah, we're derailing this. I used to wear thick glasses. Like I was like legally blind without glasses. Um, so yeah, it's 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 great. Like do it. Like zap your eyes, people. Yeah, yeah. I experienced a, a year of eye dryness, but it's worth it. Do it. My friend did it. She she moved to like Southeast Asia. So before she moved out there, she didn't want the hassle of contact lenses. So her and her husband, they both got their eyes lasered and they completely swear by it. Like changed their lives. Oh yeah. Anyway, um, this this tooltip here on the radio, I, I get the sense that there's a Vizin tooltip just because of the, the way that it's displaying. But I don't think Vizin tooltips work on mobile, which I learned recently. Um, so I, I'm going to have to check it on desktop, but I think what's happening here is that there's, there is some additional data, but it's not coming through because we're looking at it on a mobile. Um, and with the ways to reduce at the bottom, like I feel like it wants me to interact with it, but then I, I click on it, it doesn't do anything. So I just kind of feel like, like disappointed, like not disappointed, <laughs> not disappointed <laughs> with Kamal, but like, like sad, like I'm, I'm clicking the button with anticipation, like, oh, effective transportation. And then it's like, nothing I'm like oh okay that was yeah. just a way to, to reduce like it wasn't a call to action for me to click this so i'd say a way around that it would be to f just float a blank um over the top so then you you people won't be able to click it it's like what i said at the beginning don't create something that's looks like it's interactive when it's not um so yeah anything that you don't want people to interact with you can always float a blank over the top and um any interactivity disappears I wonder if people are going to look at my face and try to identify the moment, like my heart sank <laughs> when I clicked on I'm like, oh. You wanted come out to tell you how to plant a tree, didn't you? That was that was what know. it was, like. <laughs> or how to reduce the size of your carbon footprint. Now I'll never I'll, know. I'll let you Google that. <laughs> but no, I, I, I like it. It's a good biz. I just think, I think we just need to be conscious of interactivity. Um, and like the use of set actions on a phone, um, you know, it's not as easy to use as, you, as it would be on a desktop. Okay. 
the next one is by Pala. So weird for me not use. I'm not using my laptop at all. I'm just using the uh, the phone. All right. Oh this no. This one's not coming up either. Okay, so this one looks great on mine. Like right. actually, this is one of the ones that sort of struck me initially, more for like the artsiness of it. And I'm okay. like, oh hey, like you can do that. Oh, let's try his name wrong. Hang on. And this, can you tell me what the topic is? Because I, I can't see. Oh, it's into the deep ocean. It's about the oh, oceans. Oh yeah, yeah. And I it's like got it. this wonderful depth as you scroll down the page. Yeah, I've, it reminds. I, I saw this one um, when it first came out. It reminds me of something you'd see in like National Geographic. Uh, there's yeah. a viz. So I, I went to an Andy Kirk uh, data viz workshop a long time ago, and he showed some vizs, and we had to kind of like give our thoughts on them. And there was one about whales, and it was very much like this. It was about um, Oh, there's a certain type of whale that goes down to the bottom of the ocean it picks up food from the bottom and then comes back up to the top and it just reminded me of that viz in the in the way that we can just go down right to the right to the ocean floor right so i enjoyed exploring this one it's uh some people might gripe about there being a pie chart this is a perfectly legitimate use of a pie chart um it's basically just showing you the 94 um, percent yeah. so it's a great way of showing you the overwhelming volume of life forms that are aquatic so great use of a pie yeah. chart and half of them haven't been identified right there's a lot of life form particularly in the the deep deep ocean where you just don't really know what's down there and they are yeah. super creepy nightmare fuel so look that stuff up man like it's, those th those are creepy fish yeah I, I'm, i've got a huge phobia of fish anyway um, and, and whales. I, I, I can't watch whales on the TV. It really freaks me out. Um, it's not something that affects me day to day, thankfully. Um, but I, I have got a fear of fish. I've got a fear of the sea. Um, so that stuff is really scary for me. But there are some good David Attenborough um, like documentaries that explore this kind of stuff. So this viz really rewards your curiosity because as you click on the dots, the text elements and or visual elements appear on it. So it's almost like a guided museum tour you take down the page. I almost might have, uh, I think I would have thrown a transparent background on those dots and just sort of let them be like little buoys guiding you down. Because right now it sort of overshadows that uh, the blue ocean, which is yeah. one of the big design elements. But it's a lot of fun. Like I really enjoyed looking at this last time. And now I'm, I'm clicking again, looking at more of the dots. Um, because it gives you a little bit of information at the top just to make you curious and then as you go further down it doesn't hold your hand and, and asks more of you to click on it to learn more yeah uh, which i really enjoyed i do really like this it's you could spend a lot of time um interacting i like how things like this pop up right so i've clicked this one uh and i can see the mariana snailfish it's a deepish fish found at eight thousand meters wow there was one I think that mentioned about the deepest um, point like a human had been. Um, there's this whole thing about like, you know, the Titanic's quite deep, right? And like James Cameron went down and um, the little buggy, I think that was, a, didn't he break a record? Or he did, I think there was something in it. He, or it was the first time they'd done something or other. Um, I can tell you that James Cameron and uh, Bill Paxton were eating uh, lunch or breakfast actually on the deck of the Titanic in their submersible when 9-11 happened. Wow, that's an yeah, interesting so fact. When they, when they resurfaced, things were really weird for them. But yeah, that, wow. that's what that's what you get if you're friends with James Cameron. He does stuff like that, so. Yeah, that's amazing. That, that, that I, The whole Titanic thing like fascinates me anyway, but the, the fact they went down there and they had that like buggy thing, it's just insane. Yeah, I, I like this viz. Honestly, it's so different from so many of the others. It's yeah. hard to think of sort of classical uh, data viz criticism because it's more of an interactive art piece. And it's really got one primary data viz element, which is you're those dots on the yeah. right, which populate the field to the left. I think it was really well done. The text is all readable and it makes me curious. Yeah, I, I really like it too. The, I, get, I think the only thing that I might change is just not bold all of the text. So I noticed that all of the text pretty much is, is bolded. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I'll just probably just keep those kind of call outs, you know, maybe bolded as they are, but not just not everything. Cause I think you can, it kind of loses the effect. 
you do that but apart from that um it's easy to interact with it's the the uh, interactivity is obvious that the buttons work they do something um yeah it's great yeah a lot of fun thank you yeah and let's go back to the next one so the next one is by Pressan. and this is one of the ones uh, up to this point that looks the most like an app yes um and that again that wasn't an ask of this exercise that was me jokingly referring to this as the happening but like when you look at it it definitely feels like something i just loaded onto my phone that's asking me to sort of click through and explore and yeah. i find that interesting and i noticed straight away that he's using the show viz home equals no because we're getting that that you know the viz pop up without that tablet public surround which i think on mobile is pretty nice and yeah. um, so far none of the other ones have done that and i do love and I really appreciate this, that he's picked an image here that, you know, instantly has that kind of sense of adventure, um, you know, sports about it. So I'm going to click here to get started. Obvious button. <laughs> and and um, already, like by the time you've reached screen two, one of Sarah's uh, big wants is you already got a home button. Like we're, we're already yes. giving you that out. I quite like the uh, the gradient background as well. I think it looks uh, pretty cool. So, uh, what sport should we dive into? Oh gosh, uh, let's <laughs> do water. Water. Okay. So we can do surfing, kayaking, paragliding. Um, select. It's come up selected for river rafting. Just fine. I'd love this because it, through. I, it looks good on mine. It looks good on yours. Yeah. Um, and straight away we can see where, where in India you can go river rafting. Have you ever been river rafting, Zach? Just out of I have. I've done whitewater rafting before okay. at like six in the morning. Um, that was an adventure. I was 18. That's when you do stuff like that. Where did you go? Uh, Somewhere in the US? In East Tennessee, about eight hours from where I live, there's some good whitewater rafting. To be okay. Done, but nowhere near as good as Colorado and that sort of thing. It's very yeah. fun, but it's not the kind of thing I feel like I'm, gonna, I'm like needing to do as a near 40. Yeah, year. yeah. I've never done it. The, the closest thing I've done is a theme park. Like you go on those rides where you go through the, the fake kind of river rapids. I mean, you're um, kind of good. Like how long would you like to do that? Is like three minutes good or would you like a yeah. couple hours of it? Yeah, it's I, I've watched I watched too many films where it all goes wrong. Um, I watched a film the other day. It's what's it called? Um, Jungle, I think it's called. It's got uh, the guy from Harry Potter, so the, Harry, the guy who plays Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe yeah. He he basically gets. Um, it's really interesting and it's a true story. He gets lost in the jungle in South America. Um, basically, him and his they're all students. Him and his mates get enticed to go into the jungle to, by this random guy who says that there's there's gold there and they can make loads of money and they, they follow him and he's basically a con artist um, and Daniel Radcliffe gets separated from his friends and he's on a on a that kind of river and it's terrifying um, he nearly dies and it's it's, ba it's a true story it happened in the 70s um, I highly recommend it but anyway that's I'm just getting Her these spit. visions <laughs> I'm getting these visions in my head of that that film well, I'm, gonna... I am enjoying this, these menus. Like these are like all perfectly thumb sized. The navigation's smooth. They pop up supplemental text and have the nice yeah. rates at the bottom. It feels very intuitive and just like um, eminently clickable. Like I kind I want to interact with it, you know? Yeah. And we've got the two menu buttons I mentioned. So you've got the hamburger menu, you've got the, the home button. I'm gonna click on the hamburger just to see what happens. Okay, so we go back here, which is, Great, so I'm going to go to um, land. So the home, uh, the uh, hamburger button when you're inside one of these menus is like a sub return taking you back to the uh, the, uh, the sport type menu. And if I click on the home, I imagine I go back to that initial screen. Yep. Yep. You've got an really information fun. icon. I mean, I don't have a lot to, uh, to say. It's like, it's uh, in terms of the mobile experience, maybe the text portion, like for each sport that appears, might have some readability issues because it's got sort of a tealy gray black background. And some people might struggle to read text on that. I mean, I'm doing okay, but even then I admit like, uh, it's not like it could be a little bit clear. I mean, that's like my nitpick really. Like I'm sort of- yeah. Yeah, 
the only thing I'd say is I'm thinking about like fat fingers again. Um, I might just make those bars a little bit taller because on my phone they're quite small, and I'm I'm worried I'm going to pick the wrong one when I when I click on them. Um, but other than that, it's I think it's great. I guess I guess the the only other thing that if it was just if you were going to design this for real, you might consider, and I'm assuming this doesn't do that. No, is to be able to click through to actually look at some of these places. So maybe they have a website, or you could look at it on a map, or or something like that. Yeah, I think that's yeah, great. That's great. And as Sarah moves on to the next one, I want to say for those of you enchanted by Disney's classic Frozen. A few years before that, there was a movie called Frozen that came out about skiers that get stuck on a ski lift and are slowly picked off one by one by wolves. So whenever my wow. children talk about Frozen, that's what I think about. So, you know, it's no white water rafting, but if you have a snow day and, it you know, It sounds bored, intense. Frozen. It's two guys, wasn't it? They one got they did wasn't there like an avalanche or something? It was two guys and a girl. They get on the ski lift yeah, I've and seen uh it. And the neglectful employees of the ski resort think everyone's down, so they just shut the thing off and leave them there. And yeah. uh, they they have to make a, a choice whether to jump for it and be eaten by wolves or freeze to death slowly. So, yeah, I think I've seen it. I, you know, that's the kind of film that I like. I like all these sick and twisted horror movies, like disaster films. Um, all right, so this one's by uh, Pratik, and again, it's and this a... one was also part of. Uh, my my other project it summer. was now i love i i really appreciate uh Pratik's design it's, he uses the black and white color palette in every single biz um he was actually on some of the uh the tc uh, zoom calls that we did and we asked him about it and he was like you know it's sometimes it's really hard just to stick to those two colors but he's determined to stick with it and if you look at his profile it just looks amazing because it's just literally all black and white it looks like really slick um so then this, this one it's really fun yeah so um if i click on energy for instance in this one i get that extra chart at the bottom which breaks down energy to the next level which i think is it's really nice how you've got that container pop up and then you got one more level this thing goes okay. three levels so, deep. it's the oh, inception right. of data viz it's really annoying how that tooltip comes up though um, yeah so so in terms of a, a remedies for this one I mean, the text cuts off a little bit on the top box for me, but really that tooltip's the real joy killer because like, I'm so excited by the pop-up of the next thing, which is just so enchanting and magical on my phone. And then I get that tooltip and I'm just like, ah! And I'm yeah. Andy Rooney suddenly. <laughs> it's, and I don't wanna, on the tooltip, you can click clear selection. I don't wanna do that. Um, the tooltip is really nice. Like the design of that's really nice. I'd say just, you know, just switch off the command buttons. Um, or switch off the tooltip altogether. Um, it has a natural endpoint as well, right? I think it's quite logical that once you get down to these layers, you, there is no more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really great because in terms of, you know, in some of these we've said, finding that terminating point where you're like, okay, we're at the end now. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, because it is a single screen and there's only so much real estate to cover, you've hit the bottom layer. There's no question as to like what the next thing is. Yeah. So it's nice for sort of that exploration and giving you those additional layers to drill down. Yes. Yeah. The of, only thing I oh, might change is where he's got the uh, click on the sector, the subsector breakdown. I might just bring that up. Um, so it's because if, if I was so if I'm opening up this space, I, I can see that, right? I don't see that kind of guide to what I should do to interact. So I might just bring that up above the um, tree map just to make it super clear. But other than that, it's great. By the way, it's the best Zoom call ever because it's the only one where I get to be on my phone the entire time. <laughs> you know, you're not even looking at the visitors. You're probably on Twitter. Yeah. I'm, oh, oh, man. Oh, I've messed up my phone now. Okay. What? Yeah. That's one thing we've ne we haven't done any of these in landscape. You, we were just really. We haven't. I'm not going to do that to anybody. I don't <laughs> Right. We're going to start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there we go. go. There he is. Okay, so this is New York City. Yeah. Public Works. Let me find it. So, in fact, visits a lot. <laughs> He's done tons of visits since this one. Cranking them out. Okay. So this is looking at the like the public New York City data set, right? The thing yeah. company. 
visualize a lot. First of all, I'd say I'm having, it's looking like it's too big for my screen. Um, Sam, so, I wonder if maybe he has a larger aspect ratio phone or something. He's probably or got a really I, I nice know. like phone, like one of those, you know, those big ones that we said we, <laughs> we couldn't use at the beginning because of our thumbs. Um, I can't zoom out either. So, I mean, I can, if I try and pinch out, it doesn't stay. So I'm going to have to be it like this. Um, I, I do like I have what I have looked at it at desktop it works really well on desktop um, so yeah so I, I do like how we've got the initial like kind of home page and the obvious um, button to kind of interact so I'm just going to click that and then we have the um, got the category buttons at the top when I when I first saw this I wasn't an immediately sure like what each of the buttons was referencing um it does say if you if you click on a button i think there's a tool tip or something that tells you what it is that header changes um for sure so it'll change it'll yeah okay dust bins. it's nice interactivity i like i like how it works i did give um i gave, gave him some feedback already um because i think when he initially did the viz we had the the up to where the chart is at the bar chart but then kind of like no other context so because i was because on the phone right the, it's really hard to get a map right on the phone you, you, unless i zoom in and zoom in especially with density marks they're really hard to kind of like drill into the detail um and i just say to him like what's the takeaway <laughs> so let I, okay i can see kind of like where the dustbins are a lot of them are in manhattan um but i'm not really getting any Oh, hang on, I've messed the map up now. <laughs> um, I'm not really getting any additional like detail. No, it's, I mean, if I try and zoom in, I can. It's interesting if you zoom in enough, you see it sort of snap to the grid um, and sort of align in that way. I've been messing okay. with it myself. I don't know if uh, it's a choice to allow sort of the zooming in on the map or whether it's just uh, not turning off that feature. Uh, but yeah, I think it's definitely right to have some sort of conclusion or editorial at the bottom to say something about it. Because for me, I'm like, okay, it's kind of interesting to know, you know, the different site types. So beyond that, I'm just kind of looking at it. It's like, yeah, there's a lot there. And I don't know what to like say about it. Um, yeah. Because I think, you know, the bins are where the people are, right? I think in the most, and most of these things are you where there's people, you're going to get Wi-Fi, you're going to get dustbins, you're going to get phones. Um, so I think when you look at those three things, the trends are similar, um, which is why I asked for that additional kind of like story. Um, if I click on the bar, so I'm going to click on indoor dustbins, which I find really interesting that they've got this data. It makes you wonder how they have that data. I'm assuming that they're in um, maybe uh, public buildings, like universities, museums, that kind of thing. Makes sense. And when I click on indoor, the um, the dots on the, the map go blue. And it's quite difficult to look see those against the, the map background, which is always an already like kind of like a bluey shade. So I might consider changing the color of those just so they stand out a little bit more. And you and I have the same experience on the tool tips where they sort of take up more of the page than you can see at a time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just all these weird little quirks uh, that you experience on mobile with uh, some of those tooltips and the uh, real estate that you have to display because if you're doing that on desktop like it finds a way to display even if it's outside the parameters of your viz in this case your viz takes up your entire screen in the first place so there's nowhere else for it to go yeah i think what i would do in this with this is with this bar chart is actually just label the bars turn the turn the tooltip off and um get rid of the axes because I think with those, just those percentage labels at the end of the bars will be enough. Yeah, I think so. I agree with that. Because uh, although the tooltip's formatted, it's just saying there are this many percent of bins indoors, basically, which we already know from the chart. Yep. Um, we have a home button. <laughs> so uh, that's always good. And we have an um, info button to talk about the data sources. We do. Right. Um, always remember to fix your map as well. So, I mean, I could zoom right out and look at the world if I wanted to in this case. Um, and one of the dangers of this in particular on mobile is particularly if the map takes up a certain amount of real estate, you're unable to scroll the entire page without sort of scrolling the map with it. Yeah, so when I scroll this, I'm needing, I have to scroll right now. I'm scrolling in between those, those buttons at the top just to shift it down a little bit. Um, Yeah, 
I do like how that you know how it how it's all the navigation buttons and how it it's simple to use in that sense. And we have a conclusion. And this, this, is that yeah, it does. So we can only see a conclusion once you click on the payphones. Interesting. So it's kind of counting on you navigating through all three views. In Left to right. In yeah. Order to get to the conclusion. Yeah. Which may be presumptive, um, but I mean, creative. So, but I think you it, you need to sort of spell it out for people like, hey, you're not going to get the goods until you look at all of these. Yeah. I think in that case, I might consider moving those buttons to the bottom and only displaying the next one in the sequence. Just like we've seen the navigation buttons where you click through, you've got the arrows, you've got another arrow, you've got another arrow. In this case, you could start off with Wi-Fi, then move to dustbins, then move to pay phones and then move to the conclusion. I think that might work better than initially showing those buttons at the top, which again, they're at the top where we said about, you know, when we talk, when we spoke about placement of buttons, it's always best to put them at the bottom where they're easy to find with your thumb. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But I do appreciate the, uh, the, the little house um, to take me back to the beginning. All right, uh, next one. So this one, I think, may be a redesign of an Iron Viz feeder entry. Okay. Because I, I believe I remember seeing this one before a couple times. And I think it's been sort of redesigned and reformatted. It's the healthcare one, right? It is the healthcare yeah. one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw this as part of Iron Viz, yeah. It's it's just loading up on the screen. It's on my phone. So. Which hey, nothing says it had to be 100% original just for this project. That was we've seen people have done plenty of crossover stuff. I think, I think were I looking at this on my okay. First of all, I think it's all very orderly. So as you scroll down and if you're to flick your thumb down the page, it's a really nice progression. I think maybe reading this on an iPad, it might be pretty good. I think reading it on my phone. I am hopelessly lost if I don't, uh, you know, pinch and zoom. It's your eyes That's again, it. Zach. Uh, it's my eyes. Like, you know, <laughs> look, I, that LASIK was 12 years ago. Your eyes still progress after that. And again, yeah. I'm almost 40 and that much closer to death. Uh, <laughs> Ever the, uh, you know, the pessimist. Um, yeah, no, so the, for me, the text on my phone is incredibly small. It doesn't look so bad on the screen because it's obviously bigger, but I would struggle. I can read the. I mean, I've got pretty good eyes. I can read the title, so the what, how, who can donate, complexity, but I, I'm, I'm struggling to read any of the other text. I mean, that's mostly it for me. It's got all of the nice interactivity that I love about a really good biz. The charts are attractive. You know, nice rounded edges, some creativity with uh, using those bars to create gradients there, which is unnecessary but playful. Um, and I mean, that that's one of the big elements of this color was such a big deal with the blue, the green and the gray as sort of design elements moving through it. Just the only downside is it doesn't feel like necessarily mobile first. It looks good on mobile in terms of strictly aesthetics, but in yeah. terms of readability, I, my readability drops off significantly and I'm like, I'm doing, you know, my, my, my grandpa pinch and zoom and like looking real yeah. close at this. Which, unfortunately, for some of the things might take away from it, and particularly if there's an interactive element that sort of does a second step once I click on it. Yeah. What I would like in this, in the case of this viz, is to split each of those sections out onto separate views. So we could have a what page, a who can donate page, complexity page. I think that might make it a little bit more digestible, just like we have the viz at the beginning about the LinkedIn posts, something like that. Yeah, I do really like the journey, um, the journey charts. I'm going to have to pinch and zoom to to look at those. We've got the patient breakdown. <laughs> We're both deep in thought, I think. Um, there's just yeah, so I mean, much information to consume here. 
Um, exactly. Uh, it's it's dead air, which is the, the death of entertainment. But no, seriously, <laughs> it's um, it's it's looking at it. It's it's good content and a lot of good content. It's just a sort of difficult format in which to consume it. Um, yeah. For example. Uh, those donut charts there like part of the sort of delight of that is the juxtaposition of them against each other mm -hmm. but you're only ever really able to see two at a time in any real detail because as soon as you, you zoom back out you you lose the text and then you're like okay well yeah. the greens are kind of similar but i can't quite see uh what the green means yeah and there's just so much to it right this it she's great but, um I would consider, you know, maybe if, if this is the desktop version, then maybe just keeping a condensed version for mobile as well. So maybe just pull out some of the key points. That's another valid consideration. Um, uh, shorten and condense. Yeah. Like uh, in terms of the IronViz version of this, IronViz is always a showcase of not only, you know, your ability to visualize, but you, your analysis. And maybe in this case, rather than the full thing, like the executive summary for when you have like someone and you need to get their attention and you've got like a minute. Um, here's yeah. the most important things you need to know in a minute to get this idea across. Yeah, I think in this case, it would be, you know, a little bit of an introduction about organ transplants um, and then some of that information you've got in the, the journey around people, like, who they're coming from, where they're going. I mean, it's a great biz. It's it just, is. I don't know if it's the format for this version of the biz. Yeah. But kudos on adapting it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next up we've got Sana. So we've got what to watch next. So this is super fun. I, I interacted with this and it told me that but I'll do it again so I'm going to interact now so it's basically tells you the top rated shows on um on IMDb in your country so I'm going to go down to the UK so straight away I can say this um it's really frustrating <laughs> they only we both have the same problem both of our countries are, are you so they're right at the bottom and this obviously we have all the countries of the world so this um this menu is particularly long I don't know what the best way around that is because we couldn't have buttons for each. We couldn't, and then we saw on the other viz with the uh, the Fortnite versus schools, the highlight action didn't really work so well because they, you get that huge pop up. So I don't know. I don't know if you've got any ideas Zach, around how we could improve. I mean, I I, exp I experienced like major lag when you pop up the box initially before it lets me scroll at all. So I sort of, okay. I don't know if that's my phone. I don't know if that's Chrome. I don't know if it's Tableau. Um, also, if you accidentally swipe left to right, my sort of uh, text box within the uh, scrolling moves a little bit, which you'd never do that with a mouse because you're not like holding it down. You're just <laughs> scrolling with your scroll thing. So it's all these bizarre things that pop up on mobile that you never experience when you're building a desktop. Um, you get the question mark cut off on your header. I don't like again, going back to different devices and how you're not always going to get the same experience. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's all a crazy adventure. I think this is kind of fun. I kind of wish like it went one step further and like, I don't know what the data set shows. I'll be frank, but like if it gave you like, and here's the top five or whatever, because uh, for the US it's Breaking Bad, for the UK it's Sherlock, it's like, a lot of us have probably watched those because they are the top okay. ones, right? Like yeah. they're sort of the big ones already, but there's probably something in the top five that you haven't seen. Yeah. So it kind of left me wanting more. I'm like, oh, what else? Yeah, no. Well, admittedly, so I've seen Breaking Bad. I've never seen Sherlock. What? Um, I, 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 I told um, Sana when, I, when she published this, it's like telling me to watch Sherlock and I've never watched it. And then everyone then came back to me saying, it's amazing, you should watch it. So I'm going to click out, find out more just to see Okay, so it takes me to my IMDb app. And then which I enjoyed that. It's a nice cool. extra step to put in there with the URL action. Yeah. So nice job on that. Which is nice. Go back to the viz if I can. 
I mean, it would be fun, I've like, if you chose now. to do this for a specific, like, streaming service. You know, it's like, what's the most popular thing on Netflix in your country? Assuming that data were available, you have yeah. your URL link like, take you, like, a right to watch that on Netflix, and it would pop up. Like, yeah. That's why I paused for a minute, because I wasn't sure, just without, like, reading the, the blurb at the beginning, if that's what it was showing. Um, what I did appreciate with this viz is that there's a different image for every show. So if I go to a different country, so Austria, for instance, I'm not going to try and Bron Bronschlag. Is it Bronschlag? Um, I'm assuming it's something to do with nuns, religion, maybe. It looks like Virgin Mary. I, I thought it was a purse, but yeah, it's clearly a nun. <laughs> Oh, I need, I need my eyes fixed, Sarah. <laughs> Does that look like this? <laughs> See, we're almost two hours in. Like, we're not going to hit the three-hour mark, and I'm already slap happy. Yeah. Yeah, it's clearly a nun. Okay. It's clearly a nun, yeah. Clearly. But I do appreciate how every single show has a different image. So if I go um, pick a country, uh, let's say Barbados. Yes. I see. I've got that card. So it's something about the sun. Ooh, okay, so in it's this case, uh, the text cut off on the box. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, that's just like a, a formatting concern. And unless you checked every eventuality right through here, you don't know what's gonna over. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's that's the downside of having a- like, Find your own adventure. <laughs> oh. um, I'm now longing to know what that is, you know, in Barbados, but I guess I could find out more. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I just would say on the on the text, just um, again, I think we, we, we've got a couple of different fonts going on here, a different, couple of different colors, different sizes, just uh, try and keep it consistent. I, I, I tend to say, you know, keep a, a large like font size for your header and then a consistent size throughout the rest of the biz, slightly smaller and the same and the same color as well. Yep. Next one we have is, I hate this Chrome thing. You can see all my, um, I have loads of IFTTT things, tracking tweets and stuff. I've had them going for years. At some point I'll visualize them. And that's all the, all the things you can see are the, where someone's tweeted a hashtag or something. Um, I turned all those off years ago. IFTT just drove me crazy. I was, I created so many phantom notifications that I'd receive all the time for random I things. I had this thing on, on, on cause you, you, when you go into IFTTT, it tells you, oh, why don't you set up this and this? And I set up one that, um, I think it tweeted every new follower I got on Twitter. Like, thank you for following me. And, um, I quickly turned that off cause it, it was just embarrassing and annoying. So I thought this one is interesting. So it's yeah. it's essentially using, I think, sets to create fl a flashcard deck for you based on your selections. So as, oh, I didn't even realize it could scroll. So yeah, you can yeah. choose easy, medium, or hard, and it only highlights that selection. But if you click on a word, it pops up the meaning of that word. And then it disappears yeah. from the list, I believe, and it appears up in the hamburger menu as sort of your flashcards to save. Yeah, and at the bottom there's a little bar to double click and reset the deck, and I thought that was was kind of fun. It's it's fun. So I think when you go in initially, you get easy, medium, hard stacked on top of each other. So I've filtered for medium. I'm going to click on repatriation, and then I get um, the definition of repatriation: return someone to their country. And then we've got a little word here that says tap. So if I tap, but don't tap where it says tap. Tap on the text. Yeah. Okay. First failure. I tapped where I said tap. No, I did too. No, that's um. I, I knew what you were going to do, Sarah. I'm in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I follow the instructions. Um, but yeah, I do like this. I, I'm assuming it's designed for somebody who's um, learning English, maybe. It's fun. Yeah. It, it's uh. It's like a little I, bit of a game, isn't it? Like, you could test yourself. Do I know what this word means? Because I, I can tell you now. I don't know what all those words mean. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, the only thing I might ask for is, is there a way to take a card off the list if I feel like I know it now? But I don't know. Like, it's fun. It's different. Um, I don't think I've seen this before. And it's uh, it's very successful in what it does. Yeah. Except for the tap, which is confusing. But I know now I've fun. selected repatriation, right? So I've, I know now that I've looked at that word, which is good. I, I do like it. It's cool. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's see double click to reset the deck. Cool. Good job. Yeah. Okay, so we've got two more. So next up we've got Vignesh. So this one experiences another case of Tom Brady's football. Uh, except vertically oriented. So right. Sarah's it doesn't want me trouble. to see it, so I'm going to just... Sarah's having trouble with the website, so, like, I'm taking over again. Take no, over. Uh, <laughs> just your, your podcast host and you, right? You, you can't bear the, the uncomfortable silence, right? I can't bear the uncomfortable silence, the yeah. dead air. It's just it's just <laughs> miserable. But in this case, um, it's one of the challenges of dealing with ellipses uh, on mobile is when you're designing something to be circular, um, especially on desktop, you sort of know the dimensions it's always going to pop to. But on mobile, because you don't have control of that, you're at the mercy of the device. Uh, so in this case, like I looked at this Sam Viz on tablet desktop and I get some nice concentric circles and it looks really attractive. Mm -hmm. But on mobile, unfortunately, and we'll see if this uh, shows on screen, I get yeah. it looks like a, like a large Easter egg kind of shape. Yeah. Which unfortunately, because it's a design piece, wrecks the entire aesthetic of the design. The title also gets crowded out a little bit, but the, yeah. the more sad thing about it is like, it's designed to be like, oh, this sort of majestic, captivating spiral. And it's all like, Mrah! like smashed in. Yeah, and I'd say on desktop, it looks really good. Um, and I was I was talking to Vignesh actually about this because I actually downloaded the workbook because I wanted to know why it was doing that. And because if you look at the mobile view on, on, on Tableau, it actually looks okay. Um, so I, I don't quite know like, why, what's causing this to happen. I don't know if it's because we've got old phones. I don't know if they're, they're particularly small, I don't know. Um, but it is a real shame because it, it does look really good on desktop. I'm gonna rotate and see what happens. the same actually uh it looks marginally better you'd have to yeah but it uh, looks better I mean, than mine yeah yeah it's just it all comes down to i think the dimensions of the phone and i think because it's sort of ex i don't know i don't know i'm not gonna speculate yeah it's a frustrating uh how it didn't convert to mobile super well but um yeah, just be conscious when you're working on mobile to test on mobile as well. Or yeah. maybe, maybe he was, maybe he's testing on like an iPad and this works great. Well, yeah, that's, I'd be interested to know if, where, if, you know. if maybe he did and maybe it looked fine on, on his phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it also messed up the timeline too. So like, oh yeah. It just, just in the text. Yeah, my timeline is a little more fleshed out. Oh, hold on. No, it's still in. You have to refresh it if you auto rotate to get it to refresh back to the dimensions it wants. Um, okay. But yeah, my timeline. Yeah, same thing as yours. Okay. But yeah, in terms of the design, I think it's nice. I like. I think the the radial is, is fun in this case. Um, I've just there's a couple of spelling mistakes. So I've just checked those. So I think release. Um, it's missing an a uh, e um but yeah i like it a lot um i might put on the timeline just for fun and continuity with the bottom chart like the year of each release um so that you can like okay so that's this one in the sequence or whatever yeah it would be nice if that highlighted the the one in the in the circle as well uh, and again i'd turn off those um command buttons on your tooltips because i mean in in terms of that in comparison to the size of the viz the tooltip is really big on mobile. Okay. Right, so the last one is by Zainab. Zainab's on a roll. She's doing some amazing work at the moment. I was, uh, immediately this one sort of grabs you with the colors, like when, yeah. when you sort of, uh, she definitely had some like color theory going on with this one. and. I appreciate the click me like it's got this nice little button down there and that's yeah. clearly a button and it's even got like the modern aesthetic drop shadows and stuff like that so you, know, you in. yeah this one is looking at um what sorry um did it have a at, at the beginning did it have a 
other than women did it say what the visit is about uh, uh, a gender equality gender inequality okay sorry my fault i think I'll this was this. a make of a monday um mm. data set right the viz five one yeah um the little icons in the upper left hand corner are a little bit small mm -hmm. i'll say that like the the button on the front page i think was a perfect size these are a little bit small, but I appreciate the layout, much like the ocean depth one, how we've sort of got a menu sort of thing running down one side of the page, and then the interactivity that that lends to the rest of the pane. I really yeah. uh, enjoy that. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, you get, you also get a sense of where you're at, right? So it's not like we said before, coming to a dead end. You you know exactly where you're at in the process of this viz, right? Yeah. And it's, it's interesting, as you navigate through the different charts, sometimes the entire color of the dashboard changes. In that particular chart we're showing right now, the FGM, yeah. I, I will say that it's maybe having outlines in the dots or whatever if you're married to that particular color choice, because that 1% fades out so closely against the background as to almost be lost. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really fascinating viz. And um, yeah, it's... I looked at it before and I'm looking at it again and I'm pulled back in a second time because it makes me want to continue to click through it and interact with it. Yeah, I, there's a lot to take in here and I, I like it. I wanna spend time like, looking at every piece in detail and appreciate we're just like freezing free really quickly uh, for this one. I would, um, I think she probably, do you think she designed the background in in something else maybe? like? maybe Figma or something like that? That's a good question. I, I think something, um, yeah. but I'm, I'm not sure what, uh, but I do appreciate the fact that um, everything in here feels very deliberate and conscious and intentional. Um, so as you're navigating through it, both the color choices, the fonts, um, everything, like it, it feels really well planned. Again, that was that one color scale that I wasn't totally in love with, mm. but uh, I, I mean, nothing here is sort of haphazard. Like there are call outs on important values when you get those sort of scatter plots where otherwise you, I guess that's a jitter plot technically, where you look yeah. at it and you're like, okay, but what? Uh, well, it's like, okay, well this, it tells me something important about it uh, yeah. rather than just sort of leaving me to look at it and like, huh? Cause that's, that's often, you know, what you do in those cases. Like yeah. even as analysts, we look at that like, okay. Unless there's like some outlier that's just so pronounced that like, clearly that's interesting. Yeah. Otherwise you're like, oh, there's a lot of density going on there. Yeah. Next thing, you know. I, I, I am a massive fan of annotations. It's something that I always tell people to do. Um, I wrote a whole blog post on it. <laughs> so I love annotations so much. Um, I, I really like this. I, I, the one thing I might consider just just for the mobile view, not for the desktop view, is just maybe taking that interactivity away. Because like at the moment I can click and I can see, okay, I found like Jordan 19%. I think for the context of the mobile viz, I might, I don't think that's necessarily needed. I think just those annotations, maybe just showing the highest or maybe in some cases the lowest um, would be enough. I agree. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of this, there are intentional interactive portions with filters. And obviously, we've got the pane on the left to interact and move through. Um, but yeah, for a lot of these, unless there's a specific, um, you're you're really wanting them to dig in and find specific countries, which is often, you know, difficult at this scale anyway, because it's really small dots and really big fingers. Yeah. Um, I would yeah. say I'm not liking, it's not nothing to do with Zainab's viz, but I'm, I'm really not liking the uh, the filter experience. Um, in general, on from from a tableau perspective, because they just come up so big, right? Agreed. I, I wish we had more control over filters and in, in tableau throughout the product. Um, you know, with the fonts in them or the sizing, even the colors and that sort of thing. Yeah, they just Hopefully, clunky. Usually. Like sometimes, you know, when you put them in your in it, you've got a really nicely designed viz. You put a filter in there, it just looks like it doesn't belong sometimes. Or even in tooltips, like the fact that we can't change the background color of the tooltip often clashes against the aesthetic of what you've achieved otherwise. Yeah. So you've come up with something that's very elegant and then you sort of get this BI product background. Yeah, especially if you've got a dark background as well. Yep. Bright white. <laughs> even if you do the, you, I mean, you can hack it, couldn't you? You could do like a Viz in tooltip, but even then you get that border. It's just yeah, impossible it. to get rid of. Yep. So yeah, again, on, on this one, it's because of the, the nature of the chart and the size of the bubbles, they're really, really small. Um, so I might just consider just, um, 
I think it's rather than picking out a like so she's got select a dot to, to, to each dot represents a country and you could in theory hover over one and see the the country I just think that in this case it might just be nice just to keep that there as a you know an overview but not necessarily going down to the country level so you can just kind of see the responses yeah I think the big question. picture is the statement and then showing the volume rather yeah. than the individual details in that case yeah and then I'm just trying to click for all of them to old age and I do love how it goes from infancy to old age I really appreciate that I mean it's clever it's a timeline it's a, yeah. a navigation timeline yeah learn more it's always good to have a call to action uh, massive fan of that um it would be nice maybe um to have a, a button or something i could click on to if there was a, a charity maybe it's operation fistula um or or another maybe the un i could go and read more about that it'd be nice if there was a button there that would take me to that website yep but um, no i mean it's it's a lot of fun it's the, the learn more and the sources it all works really well within the design of everything and it's one of those those visits that i just wanted to keep interacting with yeah and it, i love it because of that i learn more it's really good i'd much rather interact with this to be honest than a desktop version i think the, the experience is a lot nicer it's enticing you in just with this initial screen as well yeah i think this is one of the ones out of the set today and there's been a few for sure where it's like this is definitely something for mobile and you want to interact with it on mobile as opposed to the desktop experience. Yeah. So very well done. This could be one where Zainab does what you did and goes back to the desktop view and says, you're mobile, you know, go away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. get lost, this yeah. is mobile only. So that was the last one. And we said we were gonna do two hours. We're up to well, five minutes to go. So uh, I, I, feel, I feel like I've achieved something unlike Sam where we, Went on and on and on and into doing this for three hours and 40 minutes. Um, so we're going to vamp for five minutes now to hit our two hour obligation. Yeah, we have. Otherwise, you're going to get uncomfortable. <laughs> Speaking no, of uncomfortable, uh, we're both wearing the exact same shirt we are, today. Like this matching is not planned. Twins. So we, we had that awkwardness when this started. <laughs> it is the best t-shirt though, right? It is the best t-shirt. Yeah. Mine's huge. It's, um, I, I ordered the wrong size. Well, maybe they sent me the wrong size. I don't know, but um, it's massive. Mine's massively comfortable. I don't mind. I'm not going out. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going anywhere for a very long time. So, <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's been fun. I, I really uh, enjoyed this round. Um, it was really to see what people come up with. I've still got to do mine, admittedly. I'm, I'm going to revamp my Iron Quest tracker to so make that mobile friendly because I, I realised after getting a new laptop that my font <laughs> wasn't actually friendly. So when I got on top of public now, it looks horrendous. Um, so again, test, test your visits, look at a different device. I clearly didn't do that. Um, so I, I need to update the whole thing. So I feel like oh. I learned a lot from doing it and I learned a ton more by looking at everyone else's. So thanks for everyone that participated. And again, this is, I think a stretch for a lot of people and definitely stepping outside your comfort zone. So just being willing to do something like totally different from what we would normally do, like kudos everybody. Yeah, I just realized we're looking very tropical. So I picked that background just randomly. You've got the pineapples going on. We're wishing that we could go on holiday somewhere, maybe. I am. I'm going to Grand Canyon next month. It's not fair. You were, And you went on holiday somewhere else, right? Earlier this summer? I went to summer? Key West in the middle of COVID without children, and it was magical. Yeah, it's not fair. I know. Yeah. We've got, meanwhile, we've got like local lockdowns in place in the UK, so they're restricting travel even more. Well, it is what uh, it is. You're safe at home and we're doing this nonsense. So we've yeah. got that going for us. And it's cold now anyway. And I don't really want to go anywhere. But no, it's been great having you um, as a co-host, Zach. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, the blog post will be coming soon, so watch out for that. And you'll get the link to this video in the blog post. So. Yeah, and what I'll do is when I share this on YouTube, all these links will be down below. So if you're watching on YouTube, look at the links for all the visits down below that we reviewed today. And we went in alphabetical order. So if you're looking for you, just look for the um, alphabet order of the authors. But yeah, thanks so much. Um, I'll speak to you soon. All right, bye, Sarah. Bye.